Hello, my name is Kelly Shippens. I'm the Director of Student Programs at the Ruth Patrick Science Education Center. Today we're going to be talking about owls. I have several taxidermy specimens we're going to be looking at today, as well as some live visitors we're going to introduce you to in a little while. I also have some other parts that we're going to be talking about um, that we can talk about about those different owls. So starting off, we have some different taxidermy owls up here. We have some um, a barred a barn owl over here. You can tell that barn owl by its heart-shaped face that it has in its white chest. Um, we have some great horned owls with their ear tufts. They're easy to identify. These are the largest owls in this area. Um, this one would be a juvenile. And then the one over here on this side would be an adult. Now these guys can get up to about 26 inches tall uh, when they're full grown. and they have the capability of carrying off a small dog or a house cat. They're that big. So we're gonna talk about some of those parts of those owls and so we can kind of tell them apart from other types of owls as well as other types of raptors. So we're gonna start off with wings. Um, talking about an owl's wing, an owl is a, a raptor or a bird of prey that hunts at night. So he is nocturnal. So nocturnal's owls, they sleep during the day, they hunt at night. Um, they have some special characteristics that help them with that. They have the large eyes for seeing at night. They also have special feathers that make them silent flyers. So if you can see, this wing here has kind of frayed edges on the edges of those feathers. So the wind or the air is going to flow through it very easily. So when you flap that wing, then it's gonna be very silent. So I'm gonna flap it for you real quick. See if you can hear any noise that it might make. And that's because of those um, frayed edges, that air passes through it very easily. So they're a silent flyer so they can sneak up on their prey. When you compare that wing to the wing of a diurnal raptor, those are the raptors that hunt during the day and they sleep at night. The feathers on their wing are more of a knife edge, so a nice straight edge. So if you flap that wing, you can actually hear them when they're coming to get their prey. All right, one of the reasons they're so loud when they fly is because they don't need to be quiet. They are built for speed, so they're aerodynamic, they have the pointy faces, and they're very fast flyers, so they can swoop in very quickly and get their um, prey. Another thing that we can compare with our nocturnal raptors and our diurnal raptors are their, rap or their talons. So with their talons, for our owls, these talons, you'll notice that the feathers go all the way down to the toes. Those are gonna keep them warm at night while they're hunting for their prey. They have these large claws, that's what they're gonna to use to grab their food with. So raptors are birds of prey, they are carnivores. So they are going to be able to capture their prey and then they're gonna carry it off. So this would be the, a talon of a great horned owl, which is like the two that we just talked about that are the stuffed taxidermied animals. Another talon I have that I'm gonna show you is our red-tailed hawk. Um, talent. So for this guy, he is a diurnal raptor. He's going to go along with this wing that I showed you. Um, but he's a diurnal raptor, so he's going to be hunting during the day. So he doesn't have feathers that come all the way down um, to his toes because he doesn't need to stay warm at night because he's not hunting then. So he still has those sharp talons that he's going to use to capture his prey and carry it off. So our red-tailed hawk is about the same size in kind of comparison with our great horned owl um, when we talk about the size of the prey and things that they might um, eat. Go ahead and put that back. So another neat thing about our owls is that when they eat, they actually swallow their food whole. And one of the things that is neat, these guys, depending on, depending on their size, depends on the prey that they eat. So the larger owls, like our great horned owls, they are going to um, eat larger things like small dogs, house cats, um, large squirrels, rabbits, things like that. Um, barred owls that we're gonna talk about and you're gonna mean in a little bit, we feed him large um, rats. And then our smaller owls, like our eastern screeches, they're gonna eat smaller rodents. And so I have some owl pellets here that we're gonna, you can look at. 
um, when an owl eats their prey, they're going to swallow it whole. It's all going to go down to that first stomach. And then when it gets to that stomach, um, it's going to start to divide up. So the stuff that can be digested is going to move on to the second stomach. The stuff that cannot be digested, like the feathers or the fur or the bones of the animal that it's eaten, um, is going to come back up as an owl pellet. So, and this is an owl pellet here. And then someone has started to remove some of the hair so you can see um, the different um, bones and stuff that are available. And then we have some different skulls of different rodents and things. So depending on your area, depends on what you might find in your owl pellet. And you can look at these owl pellets and see what kind of different rodents and stuff are available for the owls in your area. Um, we get owl pellets a lot of the times for our classes from Louisiana, and occasionally we actually get little baby alligator skulls in those um, owl pellets or even crayfish skins. So that's pretty neat. So if you can get a chance to dissect an owl pellet, you can learn a little bit more about what your owl would eat. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go get one of our guests and introduce you to our first guest, Raleigh, to, for you. This is Raleigh, and Raleigh is a barred owl. You can identify a barred owl because of the stripes that are running down their chest. They're considered bars, or they look like bars running down his chest, and that's where he gets his name from. Some of those characteristics that we were talking about earlier, he has large eyes for helping him see at night. They're a dark brown. They almost look black from a distance, but if you can see close up, he actually has a brown iris around his eye as well. He's got a sharp beak for grabbing a hold of prey and these sharp talons for grabbing prey as well. So he is a bird of prey. So we have Raleigh because Raleigh was in an accident. He was hit by a car and his wing was broken and it didn't heal correctly. So because of that, he can't be released to the wild. If he is released, he probably wouldn't be able to survive because now he flies crooked and he can't catch his food that he needs to survive. Um, we have special permits for all of our owls at the Ruth Patrick. Um, you have to have a special permit in order to have a, an owl. You can't have owls as pets. They don't make good pets. We've had Raleigh for many years. Um, he's going on 20 years old um, and he tolerates us, but he is not a trained pet. Um, if he would prefer, he would prefer to be out in his aviary, left alone by himself. Um, but we use him for our classes so students can get an idea of what an owl looks like close up. All right, one of the things that I want to talk to you about too is Raleigh has a very flexible backbone. And because he has that flexible backbone, he can turn his head very far. Now you notice a lot of people think that owls can turn their heads all the way around, but that's not true. Because he has that backbone, he can go so far, but then he has to stop and turn back the other way. Um, he can do that, or he needs to be able to do that, rather, because of his eyes. His eyes are so big that they are kind of fixed in his skull. He can't actually turn his eyes. So in order for him to see what's coming behind him, he has to have that flexible backbone in order to turn around and see what's coming behind him. Another neat characteristic that some owls have is they have asymmetrical ears. So we have symmetrical ears, which means that our ears are on the same place on either side of our head. If we draw a line down the middle of our face, we have an ear at the same spot on each side of our head. Some owls don't have that. They have an owl that's closer towards the front of their head and one back towards the back part of their head. So they can actually either hear up and down at the same time or forward and backward at the same time as well. So that helps with them when they are hunting, they can kind of monitor what's going on below them as well as what might be coming up behind them. So even though he is a bird of prey, he's a carnivore and he's a hunter, he also has predators as well. So he has to be on the lookout for those predators also. So we have another special guest with us today. This is Charlotte. Charlotte is an Eastern Screech Owl. So she is actually full grown. So a lot of people think little Eastern Screech Owls, they must be babies of the Great Horned Owls, but they actually aren't. They're their own type or species of owl. So she is actually full grown. Um, she, this is as big as she's going to get. They get about eight inches tall, um, including their little ear tufts there. Um, so a couple ways that you can identify them. One is their small size. Um, they have yellow eyes, 
You can check out those big eyes on her. Even though she's little, she still has those big eyes. They also have ear tufts. So ear tufts are the feathers that stick up on the top of their head. Their ears aren't actually there. They're just some feathers that make them look like they have ears. Um, they kind of make them look a little bit bigger. So when they get scared, um, they'll try to stick them up and make themselves just look a little bit more bigger, a little bit more intimidating um, to something that might try to eat them. So they are also birds of prey. Um, they use their talons to capture food. So I have a little talon here um, of an Eastern screech owl. Um, so they're still gonna be hunters. They're just gonna hunt smaller things. So little lizards, um, little frogs, small rodents, things like that. So we feed all of our owls um, rats. So she's gonna eat a small um, baby rat that we would normally um, feed her. So Charlotte is with us because she also was hit by a car. Um, her wing was broken and you can see kind of how she holds it out to the side a little bit. Um, and she can fly, but she just doesn't fly very well. She doesn't fly straight. Um, and chances are, if we release her into the wild, um, she would not be able to survive on her own. So she would either um, could run into something or something might be able to capture her. I'm just gonna check her out a little bit. Thank you for joining us today at the Ruth Patrick Science Education Center at USC Aiken. Have a nice day.